and I think it's clear any question that you have you ask is gonna help others so you know be kind to ask more questions okay Abu Bakr Abu Bakr okay uh, thank you so uh, I've been going through it a little bit <laughs> so I think the data set is about the traffic uh, in a in a city so uh, I think the data is collected using drones and uh, it has like uh, uh, four plus six and six columns repeating so four columns are for identification and the six are uh, like repeating uh, for longitude latitude and the acceleration in longitude and latitude uh, so <coughs> We are expected to create uh, and maintain the airflow in DAG. Uh, <clears throat> I actually have heard of it before, but I'm not completely sure on that. But uh, in, we also need to do Apache uh, in the LT techniques. So <clears throat> I think uh, I think that's that that's what I. It's from uh, little info. Okay. Yeah. Anyone want to continue? Thanks for. Yeah. And if you have question as well, you could ask questions. What's not clear, uh, or you can ask later as well. But anyone else want to continue? With that what are the tasks? What do you understand? What's you know what what is it that seems very clear and not clear? Yeah, directly. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the idea is like uh, uh, we just we are going to build uh, AI startup uh, with uh, with the colleagues. So that aims to develop scalable data warehouse that is uh, not just efficiently manage, uh, manages and organize vehicle, uh, vehicle uh, trajectory data that uh, obtained from drones or UAVs and uh, and also yeah uh, and also roadside cameras uh, for the city traffic department so yeah the city as I understand, the city traffic department aims to just improve traffic management by analyzing vehicle trajectories captured by drones and the cameras. So, so then, uh, yeah, uh, the startup role is just uh, to create, you know, just under underline the data infrastructure infrastructures that will support and develop scalable data. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, scalable da data um, uh, warehouse and efficiently data management. So, what we are going to implement is uh, just pre-processing pre architecture uh, and uh, yeah, workflow automation by using giving data source that we are that we just given on on the challenges and also. Uh, you know, just we are going to use some tools uh, and technologies in my in MySQL and Postgres and uh, DPT and Apache Airflow. So, yeah, and finally, um, you know, just the ideas improve traffic management and uh, support for future for future management. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Great, but what, what are the things that you, un, it's clear in, and what are the things that are not clear? Yeah, for me it is somewhat clear. So just I saw highlight list, then maybe when I get into deeply and I start working on that, then maybe I, I can ask the question. Okay. Great. Okay. And now, Musi, 
what's your understanding Yeah, Musi, I mean, if you are being called, either text, you are unable to speak or um, speak. I think it's not professional to not answer. You are here, like it's like in a room, right? Yeah, Musi, are you there? Okay, yeah, Musi uh, is unable to speak. So, okay, salam out. You can. Okay, so my understanding to what we're supposed to do is uh, we're supposed to create a data warehouse that's scalable. And it's, sorry about the dog. No, that's um, so we're yep. expected to host a vehicle trajectory data collected. So the data is said to be collected from dro drones and roadside cameras. And using that data, we're expected to create a warehouse that's going to be scalable. And the technology stack that we're expected to use is, for the warehouse, we're expected to use, I think, Postgres and MySQL as an option. And But I think Postgres is what we're expected to use. And uh, Apache Airflow and ALT tools for the data build uh, tool uh, that I'm not familiar with and I will be reading on it. And for the reporting environment, we're expected to use Redash and create a dashboard from the collected data. And yeah, that's pretty much my understanding of it. Okay. And what are the things that are not clear or would you like to hear more about? Um, the common things that I, I think I'm familiar with is uh, Postgres, obviously. And then um, I would like to hear more about the data build tool and some on the Apache Airflow as well. Okay, great. Um, Adisu, Alamu. I'm, I'm trying to hear, at least in this week, I, I want to hear everyone's voice. Um, that's why I'm asking also people who haven't spoken before. Because it's important that you feel home as well. Just you know, when you are in the background, we are just 32. That's not a lot of number. So everyone should be able to speak. Um, so yeah, add this go on. Okay. Hi, uh, am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay. Uh, we have uh, some real data from uh, the drone. Then uh, from that, we have to build some scalable warehouses uh, because it will be uh, large data. Uh, so from that uh, the data we have to extract it, then uh, we will load it, and lastly we will transform it. And we use this one from uh, Airflow, uh, Airflow two. Uh, in Airflow, uh, uh, we will have different tasks. So we use a direct a cyclic graph. I think this was uh, uh, my understanding. And uh, using DBT, we will transform it. Then uh, we will change that uh, data to be uh, usable for, for others. Uh, this was my understanding. OK, great. And what is what are the things that you want to hear or would be much more make it clear? To know how, clear? Okay. how can I, uh, how I'm going to do this one? I don't know that much. Just I was trying to know the general, of the general overview of the project. So I want to know detail about it. How can I, uh, how will I do this? Great. And Hillary, you raised your hand before. Um, so yeah. what, what are the things, you know, also questions or also just adding elements to it, what's already described? And um, yeah. yeah. Um, OK, thank you. So there, uh, I'll start with, the, with my understanding. Uh, the challenge involves creating a scalable data warehouse for city traffic department that wants to collect and analyze traffic data using drones. So the data warehouse will con will host uh, will host vehicle trajectory data extracted from footage by drones and roadside road cameras. 
So uh, the tech stack, we are to use Postgres for database, Airflow for orchestration, DPT for ETL, that's the extra cloud transform, and Redis for reporting. Um, so uh, that's my understanding. So uh, perhaps I have some, I have many questions, but I'll, I'll, I'll ask first, what are specific features that should uh, the data warehouse have for it to be considered scalable? Yeah, very good, very good question. Uh, please just keep that question. Uh, if I forget it, you will ask me back. But that's a very good question. What, you know, what is that that makes something um, scalable? Yeah, um, as a data warehouse. Giracho? Yes, you are. Uh, as I understand, the challenge is about trying to make a uh, data warehouse that's scalable and reusable for uh, ACT, uh, ACT traffic department. For this, we are going to use uh, different technologies. As uh, my uh, friends mentioned, we are going to use Postgres or SQL or uh, database and uh, Airflow for uh, orchestration in other uh, readers for our uh, deployment. Uh, so we are going to use uh, uh, other uh, ALT, we are, we are going to use ALT uh, uh, technique uh, over uh, ETL uh, because it is uh, based uh, and it, it, it's uh, more suitable for uh, these things. And, um, there are some tasks to uh, be delivered, and uh, the challenge will give us some knowledge of the mentioned takers. This is uh, what I understood. Mr. And and what, is there anything that is somewhat not clear? Would would you would be, you know, what what's your question? What's uh, kind of when you are now about to endeavor on this? What are the uh, things that you have? You would like uh, the to okay. The challenge document states uh, everything uh, clearly, but uh, I have uh, I'm not uh, much uh, knowledge a bit about these uh, technologies. Maybe uh, I can read the references and the tutorial sessions may be giving me uh, some knowledge to interact with. Yeah, but I, I know getting even when you before you read, you must you must ask questions. In a way, like don't go and read without questions in your head. And this is for everyone. It's first try to understand what it could be, and then ask some questions so that then when you, you know, it's it's like a filter, right? So your knowledge, you're kind of like when you, when you have question in your head, you really can go and ask things and and explore without question. It's like a hypothesis driven learning versus just you know. A video like a, a tv type of learning you know I, I i don't believe that at this level of understanding you can learn something by a tv way of understanding something just coming to you but more hypothesis driven learning is a much more better suitable so good but think of questions as well and maybe type them as they come in okay. so abdurrahman Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, there is uh, nothing uh, to add. Uh, I think uh, all people uh, uh, explain the, the challenge. But uh, I noticed that in the Penuma page, uh, there is a metadata, like uh, the time uh, of uh, capturing this picture and the locations, also the vehicles. Uh, we have we have uh, six vehicles, taxi, bus, car. Uh, also, uh, there is more information about uh, the columns. Uh, the first ten columns uh, include uh, uh, it's it's uh, row represents the data of a uh, single vehicle and the column. Uh, and the first 10 columns include columns names and more, more information like this. So yeah. 
also we have uh, about uh, dimension of each vehicle like uh, the car and taxi dimensions and uh, that's what i wanted to add yeah that's correct and thank you abdulaman for adding yeah exactly so there the d description of the data uh, is that yeah it, it has timestamps it has different car types it has um, a number of other features that you would of course be able to um, design first is your schema like your database schema uh, before you add and then after that also you know you're like using dbt which is much more of like a transformation tool that you would be able to add more elements that will be helpful for your um, visualizations for your insights to answer some of the questions so yeah thanks for enriching and uh, michael Okay. Good morning. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. A lot of my friends say what uh, this week's project was. So uh, to add my own, it is a city traffic department that wants to collect data from drones and uh, and analyze into better management department. So I have three questions. So many people are not asking questions. So I. I uh, I hope this is not much. The, the first one is when I read in the morning, there are other workflow management tools. So why are we specifically choosing Airflow? Or can we use another workflow management like Metaflow or Argo and others maybe? And my second question is, uh, we are using the workflow management because it is scalable and big data or live data, yeah? So, so because it is for the for the week purpose we are only using one file or are we using to are we page data from live systems yeah so that is my second question and my third, third question is uh, in the data you, are, you have given us there is the, the, the many columns but the id and uh, there are three i i think uh, sorry there are three id and the car the speed so the data in the rows are very long so in uh, to change it to 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 make, to make it manageable there is a code python code in the technical read data so if you if you so sorry if you explain for us that yeah uh, yeah no Excellent. I mean, these these are really good questions, Michael, and um, definitely it is helping others to understand, especially, you know, why Airflow, why not Argo and others that are also excellent in their own. Um, mostly just answering that question is Airflow is the most popular and the most robust and you would probably encounter it in many companies and many companies require it and once you know airflow knowing any orchestration tool is easier because uh, yeah as i said it's just one of the most popular and many many others um, got inspired by it or added on it and it, it captures usually apache is when it becomes an apache organized you know uh, project it usually means it has a much more scalable um, and suitable for the whole world. And normally, Apache softwares that are adopted, usually it's developed in one company um, in some other company, and then that company releases it as open source, and then that becomes Apache, uh, adopts it, and makes it. So Airflow in particular is just for that. Um, but in the future, we definitely encourage everyone to explore others, like Argo is another one that's really good. But there are many also, like maybe, some light, some more heavy. Um, but a packet, like the air airflow is kind of in that middle, um, let's say, where you really have every many of the features that are required uh, for workflow management. And it, it acts in many ways in for many other reasons as well. So not only just managing schedules, but also um, a lot more. So that's mainly the reason. And it's not particularly because we don't want others. Um, and I think that that was the question. And the second question was, uh, yes, the type of data, where, you know, single data. 
again, we wish that, of course, the project normally or is conceived even by people. Like we, I think this was in a project together with another company, a German company, I think um, back home or something, home homestay. Um, and the main reason was we, we, we would have loved to actually even process the whole data. I mean, already even just the, the UAV data were not just one, it's a number of days, but the size and most people, because we are not offering the cloud at this moment, the size of the data when it gets larger, it, it really becomes, some people don't have the, the resources, their computer might not handle. And that's already installing airflow, redash and others, some people will struggle, you will see. And that was mainly the reason. Otherwise, of course, as we migrate in the cloud, those things become smaller and you will be handling gigabytes, gigabytes of data instead of megabytes of data. Normally, if we are asking you just to do it in your computer, we don't want to give you more than 200, 300 megabytes of data. So that's the reason. And the third question, I forgot. Um, what was the third question? The third question, there is a document in read data dots in the document yes. file. Yeah. So and if you can elaborate on that. I think that's just more supportive and I think in the tutorials. So it's it will be explained in the tutorials. Uh, those people who would present would, would use that code in the tutorial will explain it. So mostly I think the, the data is simple, except just the only thing that is not simple is that it's not in table form and some trajectories have more data than others so it's uh, structuring that making it uh, re you know uh, rectangular or tabular uh, it's not it's tabular but it's not uh, it's not all columns have have value so it's just in that sense um so but people with the tutors when they talk about it they explain so those are questions great um, and i think what was the question um hillary you have asked and just let me start as as un answering questions hillary what was your question yes uh, my question was what features make a make a data yes. warehouse? Scalable. Data warehouse so scalable data warehouse means that you will be able to add data as it comes in so that means you have a process driven um flow so that means you have a staging area for example the source extraction so one of the framework i don't think we have asked you to start using the framework but one of the frame for example you may use a framework that does that has a, a, a principle right what what is your data warehouse built at? which model is it using and a normal warehouse like in the old warehouse you might use a star schema you know that you design a schema in such a way that the most changing you know uh, one NF or uh, normalizations, uh, nor normal forms, like it could be one NF, two NF, three NF, like you, you can then support that kind of normal forms. And the normal forms means like, you know, what there are certain principles that build normally a relational database. But if you are using a non-relational database or for example, data lake driven, data lake, data lake driven warehouse, it's very different. That means you have now unstructured lake that you have a staging and there that's usually you would use it for analytics as well as also for but then you might on top of that for example use uh, some framework like Kedro so Kedro is just it, it is a principle a seven stage principle the first stage is that you have a raw data so a raw data that you extracted must be not touched must be then stored accordingly just only maybe um, you know in your data lake or and then from that you have for example the Um, and partition, how do you partition the data and all that. So that's basically one second layer. And then you have like a metadata layer. 
the metadata is now you are modeling for different elements and you're probably putting it still it can be in a data lake sense or it can be also in a warehouse sense where you actually um, transform something and and you dbt for example can be used in that transformation and then from that once you have a, a clear understanding of your 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 features then you have a feature store so that means once you play and once you transform and from that transformation you construct a feature that you might use for different modeling visualization and stuff and then from that you have actually models and the mo models are also data themselves and then from that also for reporting reports are also data so that that kind of structure so with these types of structures your data warehouse now anyone comes in they know where to find data how to add new data and how to access it all right scalable means basically that you can migrate it's not it's easy that means it's scripted everything and you will be able to uh, add data and also get back to the source easily so it's not like handcrafted every you know everything is just modular and modular means you can support new data types new uh, visualizations new modeling without disrupting or without too much changing your your past uh, element so that's a data a scalable data warehouse and it really requires first thinking and modeling your future needs as well not only your current need you know your current need for example is just one file eight seven gigabyte megabyte uh, when it's expanded maybe um, becomes i don't know 300 megabyte but what about if it's coming every time you know is your technology is your tech stack is supporting and it, what if like the person who's created leaves the company is it really well documented well structured and do you have you know the necessary scripting tools that you're using and do you know what about does it uh, is it a failure um, tolerant that means we know that things fail so what about when it, is, is it redundant so it, it it answers those questions to be modular is that clear okay yes. great yeah okay and um other questions and especially people who haven't spoken yet i really want i don't want anyone by now to not have been spoken so please just raise your hand even if you're not gonna answer anything you're not gonna ask just just say like okay i will speak some other day or type it um in the text if you haven't because that's important you feel home and the only way that you feel home is just basically by speaking daisy uh, good morning everyone morning so yeah i've gotten a lot from the overview i have one question i'm looking at the website and the data sets we have you said we will only be working with 200 uh, megabytes and i can see it's like 5.8 gb all, all of that so where are we downloading the data yes so Which data sets i think when you so this one for example if you look this is um i think we probably either provide it if that was the case i remember that issue in the in principle the actual data so the, where the data source used to have a very simple framework to download um let's see so this is a NUMA data set and if you select for example for location one one date and one time and if you rate then you would receive normally and this is 81.7 megabyte so you should download it it was not working last you know when we check it but we know it works so if you download just one data like that you will get um just single data which is 81.7 megabyte as you can see in my screen yeah but it's good question good that is put it is that clear now yes it's clear now okay wonderful anyone else uh have i heard from 
getacho should we use the data that is provided in the drive or can we download another maybe just download another it's it makes it last time we downloaded and provided it there just because it was uh, not possible it was not working but if because now it's working please just download actually different for your interest yeah so good question okay abdul salam abraham I think we have just heard from Abraham, maybe, unless there is another Abraham. Uh, Abu Bakr, Adisu, we heard. Betalehem, did we hear from you? Yeah, I, I made a presentation this morning. No, 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 Abu Salam, yes. No, no, I, I am more Betalehem. I, I was Betalehem. Do you have one question or? One contribution. Is it regarding the project? No, no, it's for Betalhem, not Abdul Salam. Okay, okay. Yeah. If you are unable to speak, you can also, if you already typed, maybe, Hillary, what criteria do we use to download the specific date? I mean, you really, you can choose random, uh, Hillary. Are you able? Okay, no question for now. I'll speak another time. Okay, please do so. Um, Biniam, have we heard from Biniam Tashome? One question, one contribution, because I'm sure you have benefited from other people's question as well. Or if it's clear, every, you can just unmute and say it's everything is clear. If you are unable to speak, um, you can type, but prefer you speak okay i would answer abraham binyam it's clear so far so i unable to speak binyam tashoma Okay, on the move doesn't make it uh, unable to speak, you know? So that's not a good reason. If you were in a library, I would understand. So can you at least say everything is clear by unmuting? Unless you have another reason. Um, because I mean, I think at some point, I if you don't, if you're not responsive, we will stop being responsive to you as well. Just know that it works two ways. So in principle, I mean, I'm fine. I don't want to put you in the thing, but make sure you we understand the case. Um, okay. So Abraham, what general steps should we take? Yeah. Yeah. Go on. Who's speaking? Someone was speaking. Okay. So, Abraham, what general steps should we take to build the stack? Um, yeah, I think it's, I, I think as it's recommended, as I said, just read a little bit of about the data warehouse, how data warehouses look like, and what are, you know, I think as Hillary was asking and I was answering what makes them general. But um, so a little bit of this will give you already a lot, especially the panopy, um, you know, this just gives you. And then, and this one gives you some about modeling, like about different types of, you know, how you, you can think of uh, the choices. Is it insert only or can you delete and things like that? Or also uh, you can read a little bit about, uh, I think this, uh, data hub, but there's also one um, on, yeah, so, but after that just came, just basically design what you want to do, like, and how, like, you know, do you have a, you can start from a single table, or multiple tables by looking at, so you do some data understanding and you try to sketch um, the type of the data warehouse and the, the different components. But the, in terms of technology, I think you are fine because these are already great technologies um if maybe just asking what are alternative to dpt why postgres like earlier as it was said what are alternatives to airflow 
what are alternatives to redash reading and understanding the pros and cons is useful and and once you choose that i think these as i said these are good enough already so you can base uh, from that on the tech stack but i would say first this data understanding comes or in almost in everything data understanding comes first before you do anything because without data understanding without exploring the data you will not have that much understanding what you are gonna um but you can do it in parallel understanding the pros and cons of the tech stack plus uh, your data understanding such that you then structure is a parallel process so you can do it i hope that answers um and then so i think we have a question about alt and etl it's normally it's about do you once transform and then load it versus you kind of extract it from the source and prepare it load it and then you apply transformation tools like um dbt to do it on the date you know on the need basis you do some transformation so this is the modern way of alt given that postgres and others now or many of the data warehouse technologies like actually like a lot of, more of them bigquery redshift and many others um, they are already good enough that you can do transformation on and it's cheap and reasonable so that means by using you know dynamic transformations that's why it's like it became a much more of alt becomes a modern way so the only difference is just it's a way of thinking in almost every etl there's a constant you somebody would ask you like give me that data you transform and you let it to the database and that person uses it while in etl form or in alt form you first have a data you you kind of load it and then when someone asks you to give to you know to get you data you don't load it you just write a transformation and that person then uses that you know the the output of that transformation as the data so that means as you can see it's dynamic when the data is then changed uh, the transformation still can be run and the same is also in our case like redash you know it's a query based you query you write the query but the visualization changes even if you know the data is updated so it's that form of modern way of doing Ab abu Bakr. And should we use the data that's provided? So that one is my answer. Betelehem, uh, Bakker, and Kumi. The website's not working on my computer. I can't download. I think you should be able to download. But if not, you can also, other people also can share and you can use, or you can use the one that is in the Google Drive already. Hermes, um, I missed the answer for Gidachas. Should we use the data that is provided in the drive or download another? If you can, just download so that it's more uh, different people derive from, diff you know, uh, overall then you have you explore all the data instead of one data and the red j how will we plan the scalability in terms of data volume and query load it's the tools you use already are built like that so now the the, the tools are scalable now the question is how is your your kind of uh connections and how are you you know like did for example migration if we think of migration did you establish, did you load everything dockerized or not? You know, um, can you migrate from one place, for example, from your local environment to the cloud? If it is dockerized, yes, you can, right? So that's one, one way. So, and have you scripted, for example, loading data from a file to the database, or did you just do it in, in Jupyter Notebook only? You know, if you do it in Jupyter Notebook, you have to run that one. But if it's like, you know, if you load it, the data, for example, using your either bash script or python script and then you have used airflow to to run it now even if you go to another one because you have airflow duck it does it so you see that makes it scalable whether you are there or not there it will run otherwise somebody has to understand and do it that means it's not scalable i hope directly that answers to your question Giracho Hermes, can we use um, our data by downloading uh, we can use okay that's an answer great uh one data Yes, yes. Um, I, I wanted to ask some questions, but I haven't really, really had enough time to look at the the question because I've, I've had some electricity issues. But um, I'm learning more from what um, what we are learning, what everyone has, the questions everyone has asked. But my question is on documenting code. How, what are the best practices to document your code? That, that is a very good question. And I think, I don't know if we actually, it's not only documenting code but also documenting data right so in this case when you are working 
um, as a whole, as a data warehouse, you have to actually provide uh, fully, um, like you have to have not only document the code, but also the, the data and how the process, the pipeline as well. So I'm not sure if we gave DBT already, for example, for documenting your transformation code and data, DBT already has the reason why DBT became really amazing is because, you know, you can, it actually generates docs for you, right? So that is one, but um, I think there are uh, good, just read docs, for example, uh, read docs. Uh, um, so Sphinx, for example, these are good documentation. Um, like you can use just a Sphinx that is built in, but I think there are current, recently there are also more and maybe just MK docs, for example, is one other way you, that you, you can actually document your, and there are a number of them, maybe that's a good place. So we will share um, some resources actually on documenting data code and models um, on this one, because that's uh, an essential step. Yeah, that's a good question. Okay. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Can I ask another question a bit? Um, because I was earlier in the setup, I went out. I wanted to ask a question. How do you, we, you know, we did the analysis report and uh, how do you, uh, how do you make a really good analysis report depending on the analysis you carried out? Is there like some information you can share so that I can read? Because I want to know how to make a really good analysis report. Because some people really had good ones that they presented, but I wanted to have more information on that. Is there yeah. some, you know, I don't know, website so I can read more about that? Um, I mean, I think this is much more of, I, I don't believe, I mean, it's not i don't believe it is about doing it it is not about reading it it's about doing it and getting feedback so however you read it's just still something but if you do it if you just present your analysis and then get feedback if people you know people are the judge right what is good analysis it doesn't matter how good they are if it's not understandable there is no one metric in that sense there are aesthetical metrics, there are detail metrics, relevance metrics. So, but all of them depends on the business objective, right? And then on the audience, who's the audience, to whom are you talking to? So I, and I, I know that you are from the design background, you know this very well. So I would not, it is not, it, it's not that different. It's just another design and it needs to take into account the people who are listening, the business objective that you're doing. So nothing that different. So yeah, okay. Um, and Henok. Hi. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. So uh, I have more of a general question. So uh, from the lessons we learned in week one, which one would you say is the most valuable for uh, the tasks in week two? Uh, the data understanding like so the yeah in any place when you're doing data just the data understanding comes the most right so the techniques that are used um in the statistical way as well as the and then another one is of course the visualizations especially for your dashboard making right what how do you you know how do you choose which one to show and you know what is the best way because you can just plot a normal plot, or you can also think about really features that you might might give more communication. Storytelling basically is the end of most of the things, and in a sense that it's not the end; it's just the most value you get after doing many things. It's just the storytelling. So yeah, whatever in those storytelling data analysis that you do from week one will be the essential. Now, if you did it well, it becomes easier this week. And if you have spoken and presented and you have you have given you have got feedback as well, then it helps as well. I hope that answers the question. Yeah. 
אוקיי? Uh, שאלה? Hello, can you hear me? Hope you can hear yes, me. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Um, so, um, first of all, I haven't quite understood the challenge document yet because I haven't gone through it deeply. But there's, um, from what I have gotten, um, are we supposed to use, let me see what I've gotten, whether it's correct. Um, we're supposed to use the data to generate um, a warehouse, a data warehouse. And then we're supposed to make it scalable using the following tools, the Airflow, the ELT, and the Redash. Am I correct? No, I think the order is different. You're okay. not going to use to build dashboard. You're going to use that, like you're going to use data warehouse because you have data. So the order. So in a sense, data building a data warehouse is not the project. It's it's the data that is the project. The data needs to be stored because the data will be coming more frequently. Even if now currently you have just a sample data, but as a you know as a company, the business objective is the key on everything. Like so for us. I don't want you to build data warehouse because you want to learn data how to build data warehouse. That's not the case. What is the case is that there is a business objective. That means a city department wants to, you know, they have a sample. They want to, they approved that sample, for example, based on the experimentation. And they want to build a data warehouse because the data that is coming is going to be a lot. Because, you know, as you can see that they will be running UAVs all the time, all the all the day. This when the you know, um, weather permits, and then they will be uh, getting that, you know, there will be another transformation, you know, from the, the image that transforms into uh, vehicle trajectories and all that. But then after that, they, di they directly send it to the da data engineering department, which is you and your friends uh, who have founded this company and, and building the data warehouse for that, the city department. And therefore you are building that it takes into account all the requirements. And those requirements are that data must be, you know, the, uh, ingested regularly, and that's what Airflow is gonna help you, right? So that means you're not just, we're not gonna give you again just to, to learn only Airflow, but Airflow has a purpose here because it regularly can run certain processes on need basis, either manual or scheduled, and then, so that one loads so with airflow orchestrates everything that you know including data ingestion data transformation as well as also many other things and the dbt because the you know let's imagine the data department like the city in city department there is there are others that wants to actually use the data for let's say understanding how much it's improved the traffic has improved not only that maybe just they want to also join that data with another database, which is the roadside camera, for example, for detecting, um, you know, how the driver's habits, you know, how many kind of, you know, do we need to educate more, uh, provide training for drivers, you know, maybe just that. There are maybe one department like that, another department that, that takes into account maybe in traffic lights, um, uh, you know, shall we put a sensor or not? Uh, do people cross traffic lights uh, in, you know um without being great or not so all this will require the data as well so dbt sometimes okay when a department wants some form of data in a certain transformed way you write dbt um, scripts and you you give them and and then of course the data department as a whole maybe just you know the, the general the managers there they want also to see how much it's improved the dashboard that helps them to continuously monitor and you do that so that means the dashboard will help them so do you see now like the difference is in actually in understanding even if the st statements are the same the orders and what matters to what is very different thank you is that clear yeah it's clear but let me see whether i've gotten it quite well so okay. the data warehouse is where we're going to store the data then yes. when it comes to airflow we're going to like in airflow we're going to deal with how to make the data constant like there's constant in ingestion of that data which is going to be regular from now the company that's going to be giving us the data so yeah. it's going to do the orchestration yes of different functions such as data ingestion in cloud yeah one is data ingestion but there could be other manual or automated like regular um, processes that needs to be orchestrated okay 
then um when it comes to the dpt sorry the, yeah the db the db team DBT, yeah. is going to be helping like this is the part where it's going to be helping the other people who want to interact with the data right or, or transformation in a way the data as it is loaded sometimes mm -hmm. might not be useful and right. so you might need to transform it that's why alt versus etl El etl just assumes that there is going to be a data engineering that whenever they are requested they transform something and give a clean data to people because by loading it into the database and they locate them okay use that table but on ALT, you just basically write on need basis you write script it transforms and puts it somewhere and it's still the same but it's what you write is a transformation so then you yes exactly for consumers you write many transformations and for data scientists they might need a lot of different types of transformations some useful some not useful and therefore it's a, a type of yeah transformation from one type of way to another type um, you know so it's like you transform the data on the need basis and maybe regularly as data also comes in it's not just so again a airflow will be used to run also uh, dbt scripts regularly to okay. update them okay so these transformations these different types of transformations were the ones we're going to decide for ourselves the types of transformations yes. that we're going to put okay exactly. and those are based on of course some of the needs you know you know maybe like which car i think there's probably some that are asked some interesting questions maybe you know um in dbt for example automate the generation of dbt docs explore macros whatever but these are more but the questions you answer are much more um what are interesting so we didn't provide specifically what questions you answer but from this data for example which cars are you know like the speed and the data when you explore just like you did before in week one uh, you answer what what transformations are useful and what questions are useful to answer so i think uh, those are the key elements because you're trying to ultimately the data when you look at it oh you could do this or you could do that type of analysis and some analysis are that how many cars you know which car types are most represented uh, who is moving faster you know and and uh, who are stuck and what what affects mostly the traffic so these are all you can get when you look at the data you will get some idea and to answer some of them you might need some transformation transformation means normally if you do it by hand you do it in in um, jupyter notebook right so yeah. you do some transformation and then once you understand that transformation you probably write a dbt script that does that transformation so that you can put it in a dashboard thank you thank you yep. so much yeah thank you great i'm sure many people benefited from that question so yeah they will thank you um is that uh, michael okay uh, you answer some of the questions for larry i think so uh, are we expected to use the transformation in the ELT by ourselves or is there any requirement or specific criteria i think it, it, it isn't that? because it's not written there so you would basically do some interesting analysis so that that you know you compete on what is very interesting analysis you can do with the data so yes but you write it you do data understanding after data understanding you come up with a dashboard that actually illustrates interesting things from from as an you know you become analytics engineer to create this dashboard that contains interesting analysis with using that data but if there are necessities then you know we will also just add some questions to start from as well as just you know in slack you might some people might say like okay this interesting this analysis might be interesting and then people comment on that yeah clean okay great thanks yeah and hillary yeah i posted in my chat but i'll I'm asking using for uh, for the setup. Can we use the Docker for for each and every uh, stack there? Yes. Yes. Uh, most of them have already Docker implementation in the web already, even by the companies that also maintain them. So the easiest and 
the, the very easy way to do it is doc is docker uh, for okay. everything okay my other question is uh how do how okay uh, um how is the RAS going to be used? Is it deployed somewhere or where? Sorry? How is the warehouse um, like our... Yeah. Currently, our you will deploy them. Currently, yeah. you will deploy them in your local environment. But um, as you go, it's like in the cloud, for example, you would just basically have now, you know, the, the only difference would be databases will be on, on maintainable, for example, the the Postgres, which is again, I would recommend if you don't have it already, just do it on on Docker, right? So now those Docker needs to be like because database is a stateful, you know, a stateful versus stateless is two different things. Uh, things like data, whatever transformations, they are stateful. That means they contain data. Therefore, from one time to another time, they are very different because you have added data to them. So this this must be kept. That means when the system is, for example, reboot, the data must be kept. The state must be maintained. While, for example, Redash, without its database, it, it is stateless. That means it's just a software running. So it doesn't matter. You can upgrade it, whatever. But, for example, in Redash, since you might need some um, Celery um, or Redis uh, database for caching and Postgres, for example, for uh, maintaining. So uh, if you keep the databases in a stateful manner, that means you, you keep them, for example, in AWS Cloud, they give you um, RDS, like this is like the relational databases, uh, that it, it's already maintained by AWS, so you don't have to, if it fails, something fails, you can still uh, book it and the, the state is kept. If, it is, if you are deploying it, for example, in Kubernetes, then you must use stateful things to maintain these database elements, but others like your core DBT code, D, you know, Redash code, or um, Airflow code, they are just you can you know you can start them um, as long as you have the databases connected to them in a separate way and maintained way, then it's fine. So for now, as long as everything is local, it's fine. But when you go to a cloud all you need to do is just everything stays the same except the databases you change them to to maintain the states if what i am saying doesn't make sense it's fine for now you will understand them as you go but you will deploy them for now um, locally okay and is the time will be downloading okay abu Bakr. so we have like i have some doubts about what we should be showing in the dashboard yeah that's good Komi. Definitely ask, like, discuss what is interesting. Once you look at the data, it gets easier. But uh, simply just you can actually say, you know, how many, you know, which which vehicle types are represented mostly, you know, what is the longest traveled, what is the speed in a certain time stamp, you know, which car types or which vehicle types have the highest speed, the lowest speed, and things like that. You can answer based when you look at the data. So it should be easy dbt i mean it's just very easy like dbt connects um with different data warehouses especially if you have uh postgres then it's it, it is straightforward to connect dbt with data warehouses get actual okay and you know for today i will let some people who haven't spoken to still just not speak but um, make sure that you speak next time. And, and the one part that I was, um, so you you ask, or most people ask it actually, of course, general questions, what they see, interesting questions, but people are not reading in details. For example, what is great expectations? What are DBT expectations? You know, there are many questions I'm sure you haven't paid attention. So whenever in a project, I recommend you to not only read just the general pictures, if you understand the general picture, go down to the smaller, you know, to the detailed pictures, because those are questions means that. If you are just happy with a general understanding, that means you're not really using the time efficiently, right? So you could have asked like, okay, what is operator, you know, in airflow? You know, what about um, like if, let's say, reporting environment, uh, so in this case is fine. Um, so for example, if you don't understand DAGs, you could ask about DAGs, but actually hard circuit breaker pipelines with DBT, 
you know, things like that you could have asked. And what are like macros? What do we mean by macros? And um, um, so, I mean, at least this you could have asked. Some people could go even a bit more detail. So when you read something, if you understand the general picture, don't stop there. Go down to the next level of understanding. Okay. So for today, I'm sure you will ask it as we go on. The time is up, but this is how you should be paying attention to details and ask and get because the more you, you have information, the better it is the week, the experience. Okay. So with that, I leave you and I hope it's clear for everyone because many people ask the questions. Um, so yeah be the next one to ask like in the next tutorials you know if you haven't asked it now please ask because when you ask you are helping you are contributing okay okay with that i leave you thank you so much and uh ten academy team we can stop recording cheers guys <laughs>